Welcome to our continuing series, Questions and Answers for a World in Crisis. This is part one on religions from the mother. God gives himself to his whole creation. No one religion holds the monopoly of his grace. I have no attachment for any religion, and when one has no attachment, one has no aversion either. For me, religions are forms, much too human, of spiritual life. Each one expresses one aspect of the single and eternal truth, but in expressing it, exclusive of the other aspects, it deforms and diminishes it. None has the right to call itself the only true one, any more than it has the right to deny the truth contained in the others. And all of them together would not suffice to express the supreme truth, which is beyond all expression even whilst being present in each one. Question to mother. Why do men cling to a religion? Mother. Religions are based on creeds, which are spiritual experiences brought down to a level where they become more easy to grasp. But at the cost of their integral purity and truth. The time of religions is over. We have entered the age of universal spirituality, of spiritual experience in its initial purity. We call religion any concept of the world or the universe which is presented as the exclusive truth in which one must have absolute faith. Generally, because this truth is declared to be the result of a revelation. Most of the religions affirm the existence of a God and the rules to follow to obey him. But there are some godless religions such as the socio-political organizations which, in the name of an ideal or the state, claim the same right to be obeyed. Man's right is to pursue the truth freely and to approach it freely in his own way. But each one ought to know that his discovery is good for him alone and is not to be imposed upon others. You must not confuse a religious teaching with a spiritual one. Religious teaching belongs to the past and halts progress. Spiritual teaching is the teaching of the future. It illumines the consciousness and prepares it for future realization. Spiritual teaching is above religions and strives towards a global truth. It teaches us to enter into direct relation with the divine. Question to Mother. What is exactly the nature of religion? Is it an obstacle in the way of the spiritual life? mother. Religion belongs to the higher mind of humanity. It is the effort of man's higher mind to approach, as far as lies in its power, something beyond it, something to which humanity gives the name God or spirit or truth or faith or knowledge or the infinite, some kind of absolute which the human mind cannot reach and yet tries to reach. Religion 
may be divine in its ultimate origin. In its actual nature, it is not divine but human. In truth, we should speak rather of religions than of religion, for the religions made by man are many. These different religions, even when they had not the same origin, have most of them been made in the same way. We know how the Christian religion came into existence. It was certainly not Jesus who made what is known as Christianity, but some learned and very clever men put their heads together and built it up into the thing we see. There was nothing divine in the way in which it was formed, and there is nothing divine either in the way in which it functions. And yet, the excuse or occasion for the formation was undoubtedly some revelation from what would call, one would call a divine being, a being who came from elsewhere, bringing down with him from a higher plane a certain knowledge and truth for the earth. He came and suffered for his truth, but very few understood what he said. Few cared to find and hold to the truth for which he suffered. Buddha retired from the world, sat down in meditation, and discovered a way out of earthly suffering and misery, out of all this illness and death and desire and sin and hunger. He saw a truth which he endeavored to express and communicate to the disciples and followers who gathered around him. But even before he was dead, his teaching had already begun to be twisted and distorted. It was only after his disappearance that Buddhism, as a full-fledged religion, reared its head, founded upon what the Buddha is supposed to have said, and on the supposed significance of these reported sayings. But soon, too, because the disciples and the disciples' disciples could not agree on what the Master had said or what he meant by his utterances, there grew up a host of sects and subsects in the body of the parent religion, a southern path, a northern path, a far eastern path, each of them claiming to be the only, the original, the undefiled doctrine of the Buddha. The same fate overtook the teaching of the Christ. That too came to be made in the same way into a set and organized religion. It is often said that if Jesus came back, he would not be able to recognize what he taught in the forms that have been imposed on it. And if Buddha were to come back and see what has been made of his teaching, he would immediately run back, discouraged, to nirvana. All religions have each the same story to tell. The occasion for its birth is the coming of a great teacher in the world. He comes and reveals and is the incarnation of a divine truth. But men seize upon it, trade upon it, make an almost political organization out of it. The religion is equipped by them with a government and policy and laws, with its creeds and dogmas, its rules and regulations, its rites and ceremonies, all binding upon its adherents, all absolute and inviolable. Like the state, it too administers rewards to the loyal, and assigns punishments for those that revolt or go astray, for the heretic and the renegade. The first and principal article of these established and formal religions runs always, quotes, 
Mine is the supreme, the only truth. All others are in falsehood or inferior, end quote. For without this fundamental dogma, established creedal religions could not have existed. If you do not believe and proclaim that you alone possess the one or the highest truth, you will not be able to impress people and make them flock to you. This attitude is natural to the religious mind, but it is just that which makes religion stand in the way of the spiritual life. The articles and dogmas of a religion are mind-made things, and if you cling to them and shut yourself up in a code of life made out for you, you do not know and cannot know the truth of the spirit that lies beyond all codes and dogmas, wide and large and free. When you stop at a religious creed and tie yourself in it, taking it for the only truth in the world, you stop the advance and widening of your inner soul. But if you look at religion from another angle, it need not always be an obstacle to all men. If you regard it as one of the highest activities of humanity, and if you can see in it the aspirations of man without ignoring the imperfection of all man-made things, it may well be a kind of help for you to approach the spiritual life. Taking it up in a serious and earnest spirit, you can try to find out what truth is there, what aspiration lies hidden in it, what divine inspiration has undergone transformation and deformation here by the human mind and a human organization. And with an appropriate mental stand, you can get religion, even as it is, to throw some light on your way and to lend some support to your spiritual endeavor. Think not of what you were, but of what you aspire to be. Be altogether in what you want to realize. Turn from your dead past and look straight towards the future. Your religion, country, family lie there. It is the divine.